Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth, joined by Drew Galloway. We're going to bring this to you a day earlier, but uh, yesterday I was uh, not feeling well. I, I Turns out I have two things that are independent of each other, so I had to go get checked out for strep throat uh, at the doctor yesterday. And while I was there, I was like, hey, I got this weird spot on the inside of my thigh. And she was like, oh, yeah, you've got a you've got a spider bite. So I've, I've got medication that I'm taking for both things. I'm feeling a little bit better today. I actually feel like talking today. So that's uh, do you have any, any special powers post spider bite or no? Oh, but I did think about that uh, <laughs> earlier. Like, how wild is it? What a wild story to come up with if you're Stanley, just like guy gets bit by a spider and now he can shoot webs out of his wrist but that would actually really gross me out and (laughs) when i I didn't like to think about it so we will talk about k-state special teams today and this is kind of an interesting thing for the wildcats because they failed to return a kick or a punt for a touchdown a season ago and in addition to you know the fun part of special teams which is the return game you also have to break in a new punter this season And the kicker that you're going to rely on had a much better season last year, came to be pretty reliable. But I think for the duration of Chris Tennant's career, people are just going to be a little bit shaky about him taking the kicks for K-State. So there's a lot to get into here with special teams, but let's start with the fun part. Does K-State take a punt or a kickback for a touchdown this season? I I think so. And I, I'll be bold. You know what? I, you know, you say you put me on the spot here, kind of talking about uh, return touchdowns. And, and I'll be bold and I'll say yes. And it happens in the first game. I think that K State can really exploit UT Martin in that area. And Dylan Edwards just brings a whole different level of explosion that UT Martin probably hasn't seen. And if UT Martin kicks to him, because I mean, that that's a that's a scenario too where. Some teams probably just might not kick to Dylan Edwards, but I, I could see Dylan Edwards returning either a punt or a kickoff back in the opening game. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think I'll be almost disappointed and surprised if K-State doesn't have at least multiple returns for a score this year. Certainly the UT Martin game seems like a candidate for it. Uh, we, so Dylan Edwards, obviously the skill set makes sense to put him back there, can use him as a weapon. Uh, and it seems like the other trend is either, uh, well, Sterling Lockett has gotten some buzz there. I think we even saw him maybe go back to return a punt or two last season or at least be out on the field in that situation. Uh, and then we know Keegan Johnson was out there in points. So who do you see being that that extra return guy uh, that either, you know, because I, I don't know. It, to me, it makes sense to have Dylan Edwards be your punt returner as well and utilize that, but you know, you'll have two back there on kicks and maybe you want to try somebody else and give him a break. So who, who is in line after Dylan Edwards that you think could come through in the return game? In an ideal world for me, I would try to, if you can avoid it, I wouldn't want it to be Keegan Johnson. Uh, I know that he has the same explosion, but I'm also worried about the injury concerns from last season, and you don't want him to get hurt on a kickoff when he could be your number one or your number two receiver. Sterling Lockett makes sense just with the last name, and he he has the capability to do it. Uh, a sleeper pick uh, for me, and it would be how fast can he not just kind of get adjusted to college, and it would be Trey Davis. I mean, he has very, very good speed and would make some sense and was a good returner in high school. And, and he could be, I think, that dark horse to be somebody that is that second guy. But then it, it also comes back to, do you want to go through a year of eligibility if you're him or if you're K-State on just being like that second guy on returns? Yeah, no, no I get that. Uh, now, in terms of the other stuff that goes on with special teams, uh, where does your... I guess certainty in Chris Tennant being fixed lie. Do you think that Chris Tennant is now in a category where you don't have to worry about him? He's going to be like any kicker. There will be a couple of missed kicks this season, but overall he's going to come through and that's not going to be a problem that K-State has to address. Yeah, I think overall I'm not super worried about where Chris Tennant sits. Uh, He was, for the most part, really if you take out that miss against Texas the first time that he missed, 
you would say that that was a pretty successful season for him last year. So I think that he can really take that jump and it's not out of the question. And DY has put it on the boards that Chris Sinek could be an NFL guy. I mean, he has a big enough leg. If he can make the short ones, there's no reason that he couldn't be an NFL kicker. And he's kind of on that trajectory where he's just getting better. And last season, I think he was really, really solid. And there will be some times where you will think, okay, what's going to happen? But that's the same for 99% of kickers in college where you're kind of holding your breath until the kick goes in. Yeah. Chris Tennant missed, uh, he missed three kicks last year, three field goals. At least he, he missed the one extra point uh, uh, throughout the course of the season, but two of those misses were between 20 and 29 yards. And so, uh, and Texas was one of them that we discussed there. Uh, and then you, he missed one against UCF from that range. So he is getting to be more of a sure thing. I think it's just going to be about perception for him. But uh, he was he was solid enough for K-State last year. And here's the other thing that should be pointed out. K-State didn't have to use Chris Tennant that much last season. Uh, they had what ends up being five games where they didn't attempt a field goal. Uh, and then you think about all the other games where even if he did attempt a field goal, it was pretty much irrelevant. Like he kicked one against Baylor, uh, was not necessary in that game. He kicked two against TCU, not necessary. Uh, then one against SEMO, not necessary. Uh, the one against Texas Tech ultimately ended up not mattering because K-State just started scoring touchdown after touchdown in the second half. And that, to me, is also where I kind of expect this K-State offense to get to later in the year where you're not having to rely on him as much. But I do think he will be pretty important early on because there's going to be a lot of new pieces with this offense. Obviously, two guys running the offense as coordinators that are in new roles for them in this specific team and situation. And uh, the offensive line just may not be able to hold up early on as they get used to some things. So you're going to have to probably lean on Chris Tennant a little bit earlier in the season as opposed to later in the year. Yeah, and to your point, too, like the growing pains, I think, will typically come from that in the red zone area, which yep. is where you're going to need Chris Tennant to be more consistent because that's where ultimately like his biggest flaw has been. Like if you're from 45 yards and back, I trust Chris Tennant to knock it through. It's that 30 and in where I get a little bit shaky. Uh, and then to your point about not wanting to use Chris Tennant, uh, I think that it was PJ Fleck said this at Big Ten Media Days. It was one of the coaches. And so I, I, I just saw this and he said something like, well, if you have the all Big Ten kicker, that means that your team probably isn't very good because you're settling for a lot of field goals. Yeah. And, and I think that that kind of is the, the truth with Chris Tennant. And you probably don't want K-State to use him a lot because that means that they're settling for field goals. But I think that we're seeing this with Chris Kleiman and we saw this with Connor or with uh, Colin Klein, and I assume that we'll see this with Connor Riley and Matt Wells, where K State has been more aggressive in areas where they could kick field goals and ended up going forward on fourth down. So I think that we'll kind of see that more and more. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's finish this thing off then. Punter, big question mark. Uh, who who do you think ends up getting the most punts off for K State this coming season? Uh, this is another one, kind of like kicker, where you're kind of hoping that. Uh, this isn't a guy that's going to be used like too terribly yeah. often. Uh, but if I was to take a guess, I would say uh, Simon McClanahan, McClanahan uh, the, the retro freshman kicker slash punter. He just makes sense because he was the one other specialist throughout the entire season that K-State used on the travel roster. So I assume that that means that he's pretty ready and can take over punting and Again, if you don't know the punter's name, that means that your offense is probably pretty good. Yeah, that's uh, that's a good point. I, if you go and look, last year K-State punted four times a game, um, which I, I don't know, maybe that sounds like a lot. Maybe it sounds like uh, less than what people would have assumed. Um, the game that K-State punted the most in last year was seven times against Texas. They also punted six times in the Pop-Tarts Bowl. Um, and that had various five punt games and everything else that came throughout. So uh, they they still did it a lot, despite the fact that they were you know having to you know, they were still scoring the ball. But that kind of goes to show like Jack Bloomer did a pretty solid job for K State last year in the punt department. 
and the defense paired well with that. K State typically was able to get the ball back, and then uh, it didn't feel like you were, you know, missing all that ground that you tried to make up. So uh, it's one of those that kind of like what you talked about. You don't want to get to know too much about who the punter ends up being this season, but in the grand scheme of things, over the course of what K State hopes is 13, 14, 15 games this year, uh, you're going to have to rely on every part of the team to step up in one way or another. Yeah, and another kind of underrated loss is that this will be the first season with a new long snapper as well. So it, it's a complete overhaul in the, the punting world. Yes. And for a little bit, and for every position outside of kicker, it's a complete overhaul in the, the whole special team. So you're kind of interested to see how it works out. Long snapper, though, I that would be the position where I'm like, okay, I would like to get to know who the long snapper is because, you know, they actually have, I think, what is a very important job. Yeah. Hunter also important, but like the long snapper has to do both. So I, I think that that is more important than just punting, but that, that's just me. Well, I, I was, uh, I joked with the, the cocaine Willie boys uh, last week. Uh, Keen Besser, the tra- came from the transfer portal from Wisconsin as a long snapper. So uh, K-State addressed every need in the portal this yes. off season. Uh, and yeah, I think that's, I mean, of all the guys that you would maybe be the most concerned about, I think getting a good long snapper and getting it down is like, that's probably more important than any of these uh, that we talked about, because I, I think those guys become just a, you, you kind of have them as a foregone conclusion once they're good. Uh, yeah. But if you're looking for a new one, because typically you get one and then they're there for three or four years, you know, like in case they just had that. Yeah. And so you just get comfortable like, OK, I, I'm not ever going to see a bad snap from Randon Platner. Like you just didn't think that was going to be something that happened. Uh, but, but it, you know, it may take time to, to adjust to somebody new there. It, it's a new long snapper, a new holder, a new punter and new returners. So, I mean, yeah. this is a, and, and a new special teams coach. So it's, well, it's a whole new kind of unit. Yeah, if there was one unit that needed overhauling, it was special teams as K-State looks to try and get back to their dominance in that area in the 2024 season. So that will do it for Drew and I today. If you want more on the Cats, head over to On3, find kstateonline.com, and uh, we'll have you covered over there. Some recruiting updates and everything else going on. Drew's getting ready to go to a camp. So uh, he'll have all that information for you on the site as well. So we're out of here. We'll talk to you again tomorrow on Friday. For Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. Thanks for watching the KSO Show.